says, For a great door and effectual is opened unto me, and there are many adversaries. For a great door and effectual is opened unto me, but there are so many adversaries. Spirit of God is with us. From the time the music began here, I observe the Spirit of God. Remember, God has blessed us, but there are so many things opposing these blessings. So, before we start the Bible studies, I want us to pray that anything we hold in our blessing this morning, anything fighting against our blessings, Anything fighting against our growth in the Lord, anything fighting against our spirit man, the Lord should take it away in the name of Jesus. shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boosters. Oh, let me repeat. Second Timothy 3 verse 1 to 5. Yeah. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boosters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. Truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, dispersers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Verse 5. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, run from such, oh no, sorry, from such turn away. In other versions or new, uh, new international version, it says, run away from such people or turn away from such people. 
Hallelujah. Amen. This is a very powerful message from our apostle, Apostle Paul. Very powerful message. When I when I was going through this um, this um, Bible studies that we are going to have today, there's something that um, I realized that this this prophecy was given to Apostle Paul about two thousand years ago, but it's now being manifested now. This should tell us that we are still in the last days. And then the first statement from the New King James Version, he said, This know also. This know also. If you if you translate this from the Greek word, and it's translated from the Greek word ginosko, which is a biblical knowledge or um, a passage which is used to give a strong command. So what he is saying is a commandment to us. He is commanding us that we are supposed to we are supposed to have um, a, 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 this the spirit of discernment to discern these kind of attitudes or this kind of attributes that people are going to exhibit in the last days. And this kind of people we should turn away from them. Turning away from them doesn't mean that you should not be free, you, you you should leave them totally, but you should not. Take um, the, 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 their, their lifestyle. You should not take. You shouldn't copy their lifestyle. You shouldn't copy the advice they are giving you because they are in the, they are practicing something that they are not supposed to practice in the word of God. So you are supposed to turn away from these things that they are doing. Hallelujah! And before you can do that, we need the spirit of discernment. We cannot just get up and say, "Oh, I see uh, uh, Sister Barbara doing this. Oh, she is part of those people doing that." Or I'm supposed to turn away from her. It's the spirit of discernment. We need it to do that. And how do we end or how do we gain the spirit of discernment? Every time I get a platform to teach or to pray, I always talk about uh, we having a relationship with the Holy Spirit. That is the only way we can do that. If you don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, we would just be normal Christians. We just be walking up and down without having that 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 gift. So it's important that we have a relationship with the with the Holy Spirit in order for us to have that discernment to discern when these kind of people or these kind of signs are being shown to us. Because if you are working with someone who is always blaspheming, or if you have someone who is always speaking against the gospel, then I don't know the kind of friend you are working with, or I don't know the kind of power that you are battling. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's go to our introduction, and then we can we can discuss since this is a Bible study. I'm going here to preach, amen. amen. So the New Testament is replete with warnings about amen. ungodliness in the last days. These warnings serve as a wake-up call for Christians to be vigilant lest they be carried away by the spirit of the last days. In this, in the passage, Paul warns that within the church, some will have a form of ungod- uh, some will have a form of godliness but lack the authentic power that comes from the right relationship with God. In our discussions, we shall examine why the last days are described as perilous times, as well as um, decipher the reason for the deception of godliness without divine power. Amen. So let's go to the uh, discussion for today. So why does Paul refer to the last days as perilous times? Why does Paul refer the last days as perilous? Um, we can get it from the, um, the text we just read, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. Why do we think that uh, Paul is referring to the last days as perilous? <coughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, are we here? Yes. Oh, if you are here, let me see your hand. Let me see your hand. Is that why you're here? <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, so why do we think Paul is referring to the last days? Yes, Sister Barbara. Because it says that in the last days, people will love themselves, money, and things that are like not, does not go according to the word of God. Amen. 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 Yes, who else? <laughs> Anyone else? Okay, so the, the Bible makes it unmistakably plain that in the last days the world will be filled with difficulties. Um, they're like the difficulties that has never been known in the history of mankind. 
<laughs> we can feel these difficulties now. Am I lying? Mm -hmm. If you if if you call Nigeria and you call Ghana, they, everybody there is complaining. <laughs> the country is hard, oh. The country is hard, oh. Things are not going well. Things are expensive. And the government will tell you everything is okay, but the people are enjoying. Okay. Sorry, the people are suffering. So things are difficult. Things are very difficult, meaning that we are heading, we are almost there. Now you're telling us that you see signs of wars. You see wars coming here, left, right, center. Now you can see what is happening in Ukraine. You can see what is happening in Israel. Things happening in the... Um, 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 Thank you very much. Like the wars are happening so in so many places. Some of them we have never heard of it. <coughs> Some we have never heard. The ones that are come on social media that we can hear, yes, we've heard of it. But it's so many wars going on. So this is telling us that we are in very difficult times. And in these times, this is where people think about themselves and their families only. This is where people become selfish. This is a time people have to think about oh, what I or I, I, I alone. They will not go to think about any other person. If I know you, oh, I don't care about what you go through. If something happens to you, I will, God will make a way. Yes, God will help you. Don't worry. But they will think about only themselves. So Paul is trying to tell us that these are the times because it's going to be difficult times and people are going to be lovers of their own selves. People are going to blaspheme against God. People are going to think about themselves and their families only. We are heading towards the perilous times, or we are in the perilous times. So it's this is the time that we need to draw closer to God more. More. I had opportunity to speak last Wednesday to uh, um, a, a, one one small group in, in Germany here, and I was I was telling them that if you are Christian and you are you are you sleep a lot, then there's a problem. Because this time, this time, if you're a Christian and you cannot fast one day in seven days, then there's a problem. Because this is the time that you are supposed to even get closer to God. If you don't pray, you shouldn't be, you should not even eat if you don't pray in a day. Because where we are heading to, we shouldn't think we are in a comfort zone so things are not happening. Things are really happening. The fact that you're in your comfort zone doesn't mean that the spirit of the enemy is not always fighting you. Mm -hmm. he's, doing, he's doing what he has to do. The fact that you are not praying means that he's, you are already under attack as a Christian. If you are not praying, you are under attack. Don't think you are eating, you are going to work, you are being paid, you are, not, you are under attack if you are not praying. Because if the devil wants to attack you, the first thing he will do, the first thing he will do is to attack your prayer life. The first thing you do is to do what? Attack your prayer life. So we are in the perilous time. So we shouldn't joke with our prayer lives and also building ourselves with the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the second question. What does it mean to have a form of godliness but deny its power? What does it mean to have a form of godliness but deny its power? You can get it from... Um, Second Timothy 3 verse 5. I think we read this one. So can someone please open to Second Peter verse 1 to 3? Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Sorry. The book of Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Yes, please. As a new KJV. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. Amen. Amen. And then when you read the uh, Second Timothy chapter um, 3 verse 5, as we already read, <laughs> it says, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof run from such people. Amen. Mm -hmm. So yes, how, what do we mean? Or how can, what, what can we deduce from um, the statement, have a form of godliness, but deny its power? Have a form of godliness, but you deny its power. Hallelujah. Yes, Brother Moses. Praise the Lord. I think it's uh, so clear in the second Peter. It's that 
uh, the Lord has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. And what does it mean to be godly? It means because we are created in the likeness of God. And God said, if I'm holy, it means that we should also do what we should holy. be holy. Yeah. So he said, because you know, without holiness, no one can see the Lord. So it takes holiness. And yeah, it work. There's a cost for it. It will take our, you know, sometimes pains to be holy. It, sometimes it takes you to deny yourself. Sometimes it takes you, you know, people might not like you, might hate you and all this. But it doesn't matter because it's a cost that you have to pray and we, that we have to, all have to pay to be holy. So, it, and as I said, as some people said, they have some form of holiness and they deny the word. Godliness, when you're godly, you're supposed to, you're supposed to work out something in you. Not, don't need to fake it. Mm-hmm. I see because some people they they try to you know form to be holy you know when people they see people they try to you know to impress people I see the way it is so in this day we need to be very careful it's not even out there it's among the brethren you need discernment that you need to be sharp but there are many fake people who claim to be God's own but God don't know them mm-hmm. Praise them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah yes I to add to what uh, Brother Moses said. If you are faking um, being godly, I think it's because you do not have knowledge of him. So lack of knowledge is what makes people act godly, but they are denied of it or they don't know you. Amen. Amen. So, in, in, our, uh, in the youthful, or in the youth, we say uh, f- physical righteousness. <laughs> That's what we call physical righteousness. Like, you want everybody to see that you are holy. When it's time for prayer meeting, you come, you, 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 you ah, thank you very much. <laughs> you meet your microphone, you are keeping the fire on the platform. Everybody's feeling you, hey, this sister is on fire. Oh. This brother is on fire. But backstage, yeah. the kind of things you are doing, uh-huh. but be careful. God doesn't judge their physical. Uh-huh. He, does, he judges what you do back door. Uh-huh. Hallelujah. Yeah. So this is what we call the, having a form of godliness, but denying his power. Uh-huh. Amen. I think my brother has a question. Oh, yes, like, yes you, can. you can use for Krife. Krife? Ah, I was looking for that. Yes, Krife. Yes. You act like you are on fire. Mm-hmm. Yes, my brother, you can ask a question. Yeah. My question is that you said something about fasting. Yeah. And I just want to ask, what can I do to represent fasting? Because some of us, because of our works, we couldn't do this fasting. We don't get it. There's no way. <laughs> there is no way. <laughs> the Bible says that you have to deny yourself food. Like, for instance, for myself, right? What I do is, if I want to fast, I fast on the day I was giving birth to. And thank God, I was giving birth on the weekend. So, <laughs> I fast on the weekend. However, you can choose a day. Aside your day you are not giving birth to, you can choose one day which you are free. All right, one day you can put aside, set aside, and say, This day I'm using it as an altar to pray and then fast. If you, that's what I'm saying, that if you don't want to do it, you cannot do it the entire week. You cannot get one particular day within the month. You can start from somewhere. Maybe you can start one day in the month and then you go two times in the month, you go three times. You will build yourself as time goes on. And if you are praying for one minute, it will move to two. Yeah. It will move to 10. Then very soon you can pray the whole day. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. Amen. My sister like this. Oh, okay, I'll go there. <laughs> the whole day and she's praying. You can go ahead and she's praying. You can be calling her and she's praying. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Let's go to the question number three. What causes people to have this approach to godliness? I'm talking about the having a form of godliness, but now it's power. What causes people to have such attitude or have such approach to godliness. Why do you think people act like if they are crefe or they act as if, uh, yes, uh, sister? Sister Thelma has said already, mm-hmm. it's lack of knowledge. Ah, yes, yes, lack of knowledge. Because when you have the knowledge of God, it, as well, it said, you shall know the truth and it shall set you free. So when you don't have the truth of God in you, then you, you, you still be in bondage. When you have the knowledge of God in you, it has a way of piercing through you. It will cut through your bone narrow. Before you know, you will not see, you'll be like, am I myself? I'm not myself. So it's this lack of knowledge that makes one to pretend and fake to be holy. God bless you. Dr. Stella, God bless you. 
<laughs> also, I think it's the opinion of others. Yes. Because they'll be like, okay, others are here, this person, I told this, I did this, now I have to prove it. And as yeah. you said, you don't even have the knowledge, but because you have said so much, you have to do something that you don't even have the knowledge of. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, okay. I'm learning. <laughs> I'm learning. We are learning. Yes. Okay. God bless you. So as they rightly said, lack of knowledge. Um, I remember in senior high school. <laughs> yes. Senior high school sometimes the the guys if they if they want to befriend most of the girls they act as if they are they are spiritual and then they'll be going to church yeah. and then they will, they'll they'll come to church and they'll be seeing the 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 nice dressed ladies in the church and then they, that is how they, they because of that reason they want to come to church <laughs> or because of that reason they want to join the choir they want to join the prayer the prayer warriors aha. Uh -huh. So sometimes the lack of knowledge is number one, and sometimes pressure from friends. Mm -hmm. Because you see that the circle in which you are in, everybody is praying. You don't really understand, you don't have the foundation, you've not asked questions, you've not really tried to understand who God he really is. Yes. Because of that, you have oh yeah, I can see Brother Isaac always going to the house of God and he's always coming back with a beautiful lady. Mm -hmm. Let me go to the house of God and see if I can also get something for myself. So lack of knowledge makes people to have this approach to life. Hallelujah. And it's very dangerous. Uh -huh. These are the people who destroy the church. These are the people who cause high profile people in the spirit to fall. It's, it's true. That's why I said you need the spirit of discernment. Because if you don't have or you don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, you will not be able to discern these kind of people because they are like so you see them, they are so prayerful. Mm -hmm. So prayerful. You cannot even think that ah, this sister is like this, this brother is like this. You can't even think of it like that. It's not written over their faces. You don't know. But this once the spirit of God gives you that discernment, you're able to descend and oh, okay, this person is like this. Mm -hmm. We can I can draw this person closer and let him understand who God really is or what the church is all about. Amen. 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 So please, even though there is lack of knowledge in such aspect, please be advised that our spiritual life and our life, our relationship with the Holy Spirit is really important. Yes. Amen. Amen. Why is this form of godliness risky? I think I just gave one here. Distraction of the church. Uh -huh. What else can we also deduce or what else can we bring on board? Why uh, why is this form of godliness risky? Very risky. Hey, so let's start. Uh, yes. <laughs> I think it's risky because the lack of when you don't have knowledge, you mislead those that think or believe that you know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. so, you, so you mislead them. Very true. At the end of the day, you go down to somewhere. God bless you. God, God bless you. God bless you. Yes, who else? Please give it to my, my senior dickness. <laughs> um, hallelujah. Praise Amen. God. I think um, another thing that we forget is that the Bible makes us understand that for everything that we do, we have to face the consequences mm -hmm. thereof. Yeah. So if you are doing that and you are misleading people and you are even misleading yourself because okay. at some point you start to believe well, what you are doing yeah. and if care is not taken the same way uh, our father has power the devil too he's roaring like a lion so you'll be operating in a power you think is the power of god but then you might be inviting different spirits uh, to be operating in because you are not doing it the right way and we all know that if you operate in that way, you would mislead people and all the spirits and souls you've misled are going to be on your head on and you face the consequences thereof. Amen. 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 See why it's good to have Bible studies. Yeah. You see, yeah. the, the senior dignities and the senior sisters are giving. Oh, Sister Thelma, please go ahead. Glory to God. Glory. <laughs> um, I was going to say, um, we can really see this kind of attitude 
mostly um, exhibited by the false prophets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if he's acting not, um, he's acting godly, but doesn't have any divine power, I mean the right divine power, yes. mm -hmm. then now you can talk about the multitudes of people he was like, you know, misleading. So it's really, really scary to us. Amen. Amen. <laughs> this is misleading us for the God. God have mercy on us. God really have mercy on us. It is, it is good to read the word of God, understand it, yes. and have uh, and let the spirit of God direct you every time. Because most of all we see in Africa, it's serious. Christians nowadays are chasing power instead of understanding who God is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is that is the basic thing is what is happening in Africa. They are all chasing power instead of understanding who God really is. Mm. Because if you know God for yourself, you know the kind of church you go to. And I always say that if a pastor is praying, or no, sorry, if a pastor is preaching, you can be able to mark this pastor what he's saying mm -hmm. as a Christian. You can sit down, write down the sermon they are giving, go home, open the Bible, and start marking. Then you can be able to know if this pastor is misleading you or telling you things that are outside the box. But if you chase power instead of understanding who God really is, that is where there's a problem. That is where we have all these kind of stuff going on. Because you are not really taking the, the, the command or the, the, uh, the warning Paul is giving you or Paul is giving us as Christians. Amen. And the last question for today, how would you ensure you avoid this form of godliness. It's so simple. How would you ensure you avoid this form of godliness? I would say get to know God and also check your surroundings. Yes, get to know God and then check your surroundings. Elder, I've not heard your voice. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it is it's good really to know God. God. <laughs> It is not. It is good to know God, but most of the things we are doing, if we remove uh, in form of religion, mm -hmm. religion in the sense that oh, some some churches are doing it this way, I have to do it that way also, and also by leading example. What I say, the I practice it, and people see you uh, that this man, even not telling them that you are a Christian, they will see your character. So all these things we teach others. Then most of the things in the world now, I notice that when they are doing wrong thing, everybody follow them. <laughs> but you, you say no, this is the way. And when you know the truth, it will set us free. Amen. Amen. Yes, take it as well, bro. Also, by your fruits, you will know them as simple as that. Yeah. When you are with someone, and as you have already said their character, how they behave, does it go with the word that I read? Amen. Amen. Yes, uh, and <laughs> see that difference, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting short. I think we've already mentioned it, which is uh, also a sense of discernment. I think yesterday I watched a video with my mom and I just couldn't believe how the people could not tell that this person was not a man of God. Mm -hmm. Instead of him to maybe say praise, he would say praise the Lord, he will never say he never mentions Jesus. Mm -hmm. He never mentions Almighty God. Uh, All he say is Church of Philadelphia and they are just shouting. What does Philadelphia have to do with God? <laughs> and the people can in fact I was very saddened because this man of God, he is selling Sobulu, saying that if you drink it, it's the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Everything in your system, mm -hmm. any sickness will go. He is selling a uh, banku mm, and kinky, high. that is the body of Christ. Yeah. So it's all these things. I just feel like you as the child of God, you should be able to be saying that sometimes it's common sense but yeah. then i don't blame them because most of these people are operating with different powers as soon as yeah. you enter into the place it's already at the entrance and you're already you know Feeling captured it. or you know yeah so it's you should always be careful with where you take yourself because you never know the foundation of the church. So, like exactly. you said, if you are following power, miracles, these people are believing that if you drink so below, it's the blood of Jesus, and everything <laughs> will go. Or if you eat the banku that he prepares, 
that is the body of Christ and that everything, every infirmity, every blessing will come to you. So it's just common sense and it's Or if I sell witchcraft soap to you. God bless you. Yes, that's right. Um, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I, I think one of the things we use to avoid as a <laughs> to avoid um, these things, you know, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 says, He said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. If we, if we genuinely seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, we would never fall victim of these things. Mm -hmm. And then we will not, you won't even fake it because you'll come to a level, Lord, you know what? I am tired, just take all of me. And when God, and He will take it all from me because don't forget, He's the one at work in you. So it's not about you. It's what it is for me is your desire and your willingness to really want to live the life of godliness. So I think Matthew chapter six verse said, "Please say it." Thank you. Amen. Yes, please give to me. My name is Sister Dear. And I also, I also want to just add that sometimes, as we heard, we try to prove something that we can. So we should just learn to please God and God alone. We should not try to please others. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Oh, are you happy? Yes. Have yes. we learned something today? Mm -hmm. Okay. God bless you. All. So we should be we should have a right standing and then try to uh, please God only, and then we should be able to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. Do you have any question before we move to the conclusion? You know, I'll call you. <laughs> <laughs> So open your open the, the book and get ready to read. Yes, any question you know, please. We are talking about power. I want to know what is power. Mm. What is power? Yes, this one is for us. What is power? Miracle signs and wonders. Or yes, thickness. I think it is a medium in which we operate. Mm -hmm. So you can have good power, you can have bad power. For instance, we say um, in mostly white dominated countries, we say that we, we have systematic racism. It's a power that is used against people, that, or people of color, for instance. So power is a medium in which we operate. So in whichever I mention that power is, I think in, um, in our belief in Christ, we believe that Jesus has power, and because power is a medium, Jesus used that medium to rise from the dead after three days and won the victory for us so that we could have our salvation. So it's a medium in which we operate if you want to generalize it. Amen. You, you want to say something? Oh, you can go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> When you talk of power, we know that uh, in heaven and earth, Jesus has the power and because he's the creator. But when we talk in the physical form, we have negative, like electricity now. It gives us uh, energy, that is power. We call it uh, uh, NEPA in Nepa. Nigeria. So, NEPA means National Electric uh, Power Authority. Or ECG. Yeah, yes. <laughs> so, when you think of all this, you see that there are two wires that are connected. There's negative one and positive one. You can just join the two together. Then there will be a, there will be a, a, a bomb in the, in the house. So, I want us to look at it that in a negative and a positive there's a place where they will place them in which you can generate the light for us. But the most important thing is that the inside us, the power inside us have been given to us through the power of Holy Spirit. So when we have that genuine power, there will be a lot of things we can do differently. So that means power is, is something that is uh, Im imaginable, that can give you something that you are expecting in a, in time of a faith or in time of physical light or in time of energy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just because of our time, we are rounding up. Power simply means the ability to do. 
Yeah. Ability to do something. Yeah. Yes, sir. You see, the Bible says, as many as receive, we give them the power wow. to become. So we are talking about godliness without divine power. And divine power is that power to do something by oh, God, God or for God. So which means if you are living a godly life, you need to be connected to God so that God will give you the power to do if if the power to pray, the power to fast, yeah. the power to live a holy life, yeah. the power to live a God. So everything we need we need that power to do it. So now can somebody be godly without the power of God? So if you say somebody is godly, that's what Jesus called the, the Sadducees and Pharisees, hypocrites. Mm -hmm. Because they pretend it in the outside. They see, but in the inside, they are not. They are not. Yeah. So the summary of this teaching is that whatsoever thing you are doing for God, know that God knows you more than you know yourself. Mm -hmm. So no matter how you try to pretend, Yes. He knows the heart, mm -hmm. and it is from that heart that he will reward you. Yes, sir. Then also, as you are doing that inside, try to allow what is inside to reflect also outside. Yes, because I also have to see it. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. So that you don't become Christian that say, it's only my heart that God knows. Then I can dress anywhere, or I can talk anyhow. God knows my heart. No. Because he said that we are the light of the world. So light... Is something that you see even from a distance. Yes. Then we are the sort. Before they know you are sort, they have to come and test you, come close to you. Mm -hmm. But why are we like this? Because even in your far distance, they can see you mm -hmm. and they say, This is a child of God. So now it's so difficult to know a Christian now. Because now you see Christians with dress dress like the same way. people in the world. And we say it doesn't matter. Please, it matters. Mm -hmm. Because even the woman that was that was at the well, that's a, that's a Samaritan woman. How did they know that Jesus is a, is a Jew? It's because Jesus dressed like a Jew. Christians has a way of dressing. Hallelujah. I pray that God will help us because all these things, buckles that, even when you don't preach with your mouth, your lifestyle, the way you look, will make people to look and say, there is something different about this sister and about this brother. So let's allow what is in us to reflect outside of who to see and they will come to Christ. As we do so, God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <laughs> okay. Hallelujah. Amen. In fact, uh, I intend no not to. But what Jesus, what Dick has said right now has quickly me to. You know, Christianity is not a religion. Religion is outside only. But Christianity is inside and outside. So you can't tell me that I mean, you're a Christian. And it's it's all, only your outside, because what is what what is in your inside automatically will come out. Mm -hmm. If I think that I, I'm a Christian, I pray I, with, with all my strength, and when the, a little a, a, a little uh, temptation comes, and I, I can't even able to stand that temptation, mm -hmm. that means I'm not a Christian. Mm -hmm. Christianity is a, is a seed. That has planted in you, that, that it must generate and break forth. The Bible said good fruits. So you, you, you can't tell me that as a pastor, I dress well. And I tell my, my, my members, it doesn't matter. You can dress anyhow. Christianity is from the heart. Meanwhile, you, the pastor, you, you, have, you, have, you have not dressed anyhow. Mm -hmm. Forgetting that the Bible says we are, uh, 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 I mean, uh, ro ro I mean, royal priesthood. That means we are all pastors. Yeah. Uh -huh. We are all priests. So as you pastor, you dress well. So we ought to, we ought to dress well. So brethren, I mean, let's put what the Lord has put in us. Put it in, 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 uh, into practice. That is Christianity. Amen. 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 And the last contribution. And then we will conclusion. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I just want to say that. Um, as a believer or as a child of God, you can you can impress people, but you cannot impress God. Uh -huh. You have to know this. If you know this, that you cannot impress God because He is everything. Uh -huh. Hallelujah! Dickness said, "Jesus, we all believe that Jesus died and He rose again because He has He has power. He doesn't have power. He is power. Uh -huh. And so, I, if I am power, I am able to do everything. Uh -huh. And so, you cannot impress." God, but you can you can impress people. 
But remember that in Matthew um, uh, 7, 21, it's not all that all that all the people that say Lord, Lord, they go into heaven. But those who do the will of God, it's all about doing the will of God. Mm -hmm. We have we, we just have to stop faking and stop all this. Uh, religious things mm -hmm. we can not impress God. Amen. 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 God bless you. Uh, this this will be a reminder for us as Christians as we go about our daily lives and also as we go about uh, today's worship. Amen. Amen. So let me read the conclusion because of time. In the passage read, which is Second Timothy three verse one to five. Paul is referring to those who claim to be Christians, appear to be religious and seem to do the right things, but do not have an authentic personal relationship with Jesus. Their lives are not characterized by the spiritual power that frees people from sin, their own God-defined ways, selfishness, and ungodly behavior. Such people tolerate immoral behaviors and lifestyle in their churches and among those who claim to know God. They even teach that a person may practice the sins listed and still be spiritually saved and have a part of God's kingdom. While Christians need to reach out and maintain positive relationships and also influence with people who do not know Christ, they are to have nothing to do with hypocritical people who pretend to follow Christ but are simply trying to deceive others. Mm -hmm. Such people tend to distort Christ's message, mislead others spiritually, and cause divisions in the church. Have nothing to do with them implies not associating with their way of thinking and lifestyle. It is important for us to cultivate godliness with divine power through fellowship with the Holy Spirit. This will produce true godliness that is expressed in our love for Christ and fellow human beings. Amen. 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 God bless his word.